Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for following me and I'm glad uh, you love my video and please uh, share them on your social media. Today I'm in my workshop in Feltre and uh, with my student Christian we're gonna work uh, on this uh, massive uh, Cypress, Cupressus sempervirens. Uh, is a Mediterranean species, uh, so it's a tree that normally grow in very hot area, uh, mainly dry soil and uh, we have uh, basically uh, all in the center south of Italy toward the coast. Uh, there are mainly two species uh, of uh, Cupressus uh, and uh, you can uh, recognize them according to the type uh, of foliage and the way they grow. Normally here in Italy the most common one are the very big columnar one that we use uh, to plant around the cemeteries. They have a kind of a flame shape and is considered from the literature one of the uh, trees from the passage of the soul of the person to the new dimension when a person pass away. Uh, Cupressus is very generous, uh, grow a lot and uh, it develop foliage very very fast. Uh, it's very difficult to find the Cupressus with uh, a lot of movement. Normally, as I said, they grow pretty straight. As soon as the new tree got established in the soil, it's just a shoot up, can grow one or two meters uh, during the season. Uh, this type of tree reminds me a lot uh, some of uh, the uh, species of juniper in US uh, like California and also Sierra juniper for uh, the very strong way how they grow when they are in the pot and especially for cupressus also when they are in nature. Uh, it's pretty difficult to collect them because they have a very fine uh, uh, root mass with some big big roots that we have to cut so there are periods that are better like spring to be able to collect these pieces and get success but about the aftercare we just need to cut everything is not necessary and most of the time we are able to rebuild completely the foliage of the tree just starting with some originally little branch. So probably this was a very big tree originally that was chopped off here and the lower branches became strong enough and now it's time to work on the tree. The side I'm gonna use for the front uh, will be this one because we have a little bit of movement thanks uh, to this uh, shari and some of the live line that the tree creates uh, uh, starting from the roots. So the idea is uh, first of all to solve uh, the situation on the top uh, where I have this uh, flat cut. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a big drill, uh, drill some holes uh, into the wood so I get the inner part uh, hollow and then using a bark stripper I'm gonna break the wood and create kind of a multiple gin on the top so I can solve uh, that area and probably I will try also to connect uh, the gin I will create in the top uh, with some of the shari in the lower part of the trunk. I have also to solve a little bit this big root that was cut when the tree was collected so I will probably open up this part a little bit more and create another shari so I can have in the future nice live line here and another here connected to the branches. I have already kind of the tree laying to the right side so I will use uh, probably this branch going down. The branches uh, of uh, uh, Cupressus are very flexible, so we can manipulate them a lot. We have always to be careful, obviously, on positioning the wire because uh, differently from other conifers like pine, Cupressus doesn't have a big uh, and thick uh, bark. So when we wire, especially with copper, we have to be very careful of not damaging those branches. As you can see, some of the branches were open already to create uh, inner strength and open up. Otherwise, the tree will always tend to grow up and create uh, these long whips and the inner foliage get weak 
and uh, get lost. So just opening up to prepare the tree for the uh, work is good uh, to have uh, also inner strength. We're gonna anyway clean uh, a lot of the vegetation and uh, use uh, the strong one to start creating uh, the shape uh, and uh, kind of the bones uh, for the future bonsai. So I would like to accentuate a little bit uh, this uh, leg to the right, uh, creating more movement uh, using those branches uh, here and uh, be a little bit more compact uh, in the left side. I have uh, a good substitution of the apex uh, uh, with the two branches here. I will probably bend one around the gin to fill uh, this negative space uh, and uh, I will use the dominant uh, to recreate a kind of the new trunk line up to this branch. In the future we're gonna let this branch grow a little bit to thick up to create more live line and also to recreate a better trunk uh, taper up to the top. So let's go to the work. We start uh, splitting the wood uh, using those holes uh, that uh, can uh, help us uh, to anchor the bark splitter and break the wood down. So we was already able to divide this one uh, and now we're working on creating another one here and uh, dividing from the bigger one uh, in the back. We have already other here. So you have to imagine that all of them uh, will be transformed uh, in nice gin up probably at the end uh, after redividing we're gonna also use uh, some electrical carving tool to create the tips uh, of the dead wood okay so now we're gonna keep working side by side uh, to redivide uh, this section and get uh, obviously a better taper on the different parts So we just uh, finished to shape uh, 
the deadwood so we started uh, as you see from a flat part cut we went in uh, to start removing some deadwood then we work manually and then uh, with carving tool to create all the new tips uh, of the wood so now we got uh, some interesting feature on this part uh, for the transition from the main trunk uh, to the dead wood uh, that will be kind of uh, on the top of the tree and now the next step will be protect the green uh, and uh, fire the entire part uh, to remove uh, the marks uh, of uh, the electrical carving tool uh, brush it uh, and then uh, we'll be good to go to the next uh, part uh, of the work So we just finished to take care of the dead wood on the top of the tree, recreating some lines uh, and a little bit the taper. Now we need to solve a little bit of these uh, big roots. So someone already did some carving, so I'm gonna go through and hollow it uh, down a little bit more and then accentuating the lip uh, around, uh, just creating a little bit more shari. And uh, I wanna give a little bit movement on this section just creating a shari in this part uh, so that everything will be nicely connected with the base of the tree with the transition to the main trunk. Now that I create uh, the edge uh, of my new shari, I'm gonna dig uh, in uh, a little bit the inner part and reconnect uh, with the original hollow and give a little bit more texture to the inside by flaming. The last work uh, we have to do to create a nice connection between uh, the base of the tree with this nice uh, shari and uh, the top uh, that we're gonna recreate using some of these lines will be reconnect uh, the original uh, 
Jin here, that the one that we first did, down in the center of the tree. This will also help us to uh, create a better transition. Also connecting this shari up to the top will create a better taper line of the trunk. So we're gonna go in here, following down the line, moving a little bit and reconnect it in the center of the shari. And this will help the transition from the lower part to the upper part. Is already nicer with this uh, live line that in the future will basically connect uh, to this branch here and uh, in this side uh, we have already a thicker vein because uh, this nice first branch and then going up uh, to this other part that will help us uh, to create the top of the tree. As all the Cupersace family also Cupressus sempervirens has the tendency of growing a lot from the armpit. So before wiring, what we have to do, as uh, I do for all the junipers, I clean uh, all the excess uh, of branches uh, in the same spots uh, to just have uh, eventually two coming from the same spot uh, that I can use uh, to start creating uh, the new foliage and the new pads. And now we are ready for the next uh, step that will be wiring completely the tree to be able to shape all the branches. So we just uh, clean uh, all the lines uh, from uh, all the unnecessary little branches, everything flopping down, everything too weak uh, and also branches growing in the same position. Uh, I also put uh, cut paste uh, along uh, all the edges uh, of the new shari and gin that we did uh, so we avoid uh, loss of moisture from the live line and in spring the tree can recover and start growing properly. So let's put some uh, structural wire and wire all the branches. Because the tree is very big uh, to wire the lower branches I need to find uh, closer anchors rather than go around the tree and connect uh, two branches together. So I position a screw here. We're gonna anchor tightly the wire on the screw. Perfect. Like that. And then uh, I'm gonna wire the branch uh, pushing that down clockwise. Uh, going out uh, with this first uh, wire so I can have uh, a nice piece of wire giving tension to the branch uh, when will be the time uh, to position the pad and go up to this point here when the wire is too big uh, I cut it off uh, and uh, I'm gonna use uh, a second piece and follow up so I can give a little bit more strength to the first section and go up to this second side branch and I will have all my pad done and protected. So now that we start having some branches completely wired, I'm gonna start from the right lower branch, guy wire, go down in the position, open the structure and then create my pad 
and then I will work my way following the wiring of uh, Christian. So let's start finding the position. Always remember to secure the first part of the branch with your hand while you bend it down and also try to follow the direction of the wire. So we have a clockwise wire, so we try to bend a little bit the branch clockwise while we bending down. So this is going to help the wire to tie it down on the branch. Okay. We can force uh, a little bit more here, always careful on the first section, go down a little bit more, the fiber of the branch will track, stretch also, here we are, perfect, now the branch is getting in position. You always uh, lift up uh, the inner branches that I will use for the volume. Now I can start positioning the other branches. Now that uh, we create uh, the lower right part uh, and we start on the left, uh, we have to bend down uh, this branch that will cover this negative space. Uh, so we're gonna have uh, one more pad up here and this uh, a little bit longer in the back. So we're gonna get, we get uh, uh, a screw in the back uh, and uh, also following the clockwise uh, direction, we're gonna bend uh, the branch down uh, Always careful how the fiber of the wood react. Christian is uh, tightening the guy wire for me. So we can go down, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so we gave a nice uh, direction to the branch. Now we can reopen the pad in this position. We can eventually go a little bit more, always taking care of this section here, where eventually the fiber that they will extend that can start the image. But if we are careful enough, uh, the band will go pretty well. Here we are, perfect. Now that uh, the lower part of the tree is done, we're gonna work uh, at the central one. We have uh, these two branches. So we're gonna move the branches back and come forward, creating the connection between the lower branches and uh, what will be our apex.
and uh, here we are after the last challenge for this work putting together the apex uh, and trying to kind of uh, finish up uh, the line of the tree to a nice uh, top I uh, was able to rebuild uh, the line uh, coming up from the front and use uh, a sideline to uh, accentuate uh, a little bit the movement uh, and uh, fill also the spaces uh, now I'm just taking care of the uh, last few little branches uh, I want to open up and then uh, in spring uh, they will uh, bud strongly and start filling the spaces uh, so just a few little detail always uh, make the final difference on a work uh, always checking on the lines uh, having everything nice and clean uh, it's very very important uh, for uh, a professional work voila a beautiful formal uh, Cupressus Semperverens. I'm very happy about the final result. Nice, strong formal tree, upright formal tree with nice pad, good lines, good proportion, nice trunk. I was happy to kind of be able to solve the challenge of the top that originally was cut when the tree was collected. So I had to, uh, with the help of Christian, my student, uh, rework on the deadwood and then recreate uh, the line of the tree using a frontal uh, branch. Now the tree can grow in the uh, cold frame. It's a Mediterranean tree, so I have to protect during winter because I live in the middle of the mountain. And then next year start uh, kind of building uh, a little bit of volume on the pad and get the tree maturing, setting the structure and uh, getting into the next level. Thank you so much for following me. See you at the next. Bonsai Dream.